Welcome to the State Museum of Pennsylvania. I'm Beth Hager, I'm the director of the State Museum, and I'm here just right outside Mammal Hall, which is one of our most iconic places in the State Museum. It was created over 50 years ago to create wonderful wildlife scenes of Pennsylvania with state-of-the-art dioramas for the 1960s. Um, staff and, and contractors at the time did a fabulous job in capturing uh, scenes of Pennsylvania. They're all specific to a specific place and time in Pennsylvania, and they give a great variety of nature in Pennsylvania. The dioramas needed to be restored and needed new lighting from uh, the 21st century perspective. And we have been undergoing a major project at the State Museum for the past three years to clean and restore and protect these dioramas for years to come. They are considered our Mona Lisa, essentially the exhibit that everyone remembers from their school visits, from their family visits, from any time they've been at the State Museum. And so we've been on a very long process of painstakingly cleaning and restoring each diorama, each piece of taxidermy, each uh, uh, leaf, whether real or fabricated, has been touched in this, these dioramas. You're soon going to hear from Stephen Quinn, who is an exhibit associate from the American Museum of Natural History. We were very uh, fortunate to have Steve work with a team that he brought of uh, professionals from the American Museum of Natural History, all had worked on their dioramas to restore, and work with several of our staff also uh, at the State Museum to bring these uh, museum dioramas into the 21st century. Last year, we completed a first phase of work in Mammal Hall. Our beloved bison diorama, our groundhog, uh, raccoon, skunk, uh, several of these uh, dioramas were a first phase of cleaning and res restoration. Our team worked for about five months on this aspect of the project. Um, these were uh, some of the smaller dioramas with the exception of the bison just to kind of start the project and see what we were getting into. All lights were changed um, to new LEDs that would not fade the fur which was a really big consideration. Uh, several of the animals their fur had to be re-dyed and uh, restored to its original look and uh, accuracy the new lights that we have in place will hopefully not affect the animals for, for years to come. Um, some of the uh, harder things that the team had to deal with in the bison diorama and other dioramas that have snow in them, the snow was originally Epsom salts which had degraded to a very fine powder and they had to work carefully around that and use other techniques, newer techniques, to create new snow that would be more stable and uh, appropriate for the dioramas. You'll see um, a new signage. We had a whole new interpretive plan for this floor and uh, developed new labels, new information about each diorama, uh, information that was informed by questions that our visitors are asking and want to know about each one of these um, dioramas and the animals in them. We're now standing before the beaver diorama, and prior to our work on each of the dioramas, we assess their condition. In this case, the diorama was very old and very dusty and dirty. The background painting needed reworking, so we did a whole study and completed a renovation of the background painting, which required that we use a platform to extend over the pond and over the water area of the beaver pond to allow our artists to access the background painting. All of the aquatic plants that you see here in the diorama were removed and cleaned and restored by our foreground team. And the water surface was carefully cleaned and reconditioned to appear as wet and, and moist. Um, the taxidermy of the beavers was in poor condition. So in this case, we acquired two new specimens 
a beaver and our taxidermist mounted new fresh beaver uh, in naturalistic, uh, anatomically correct uh, poses for the exhibit. This is the bobcat diorama, and the bobcat diorama has really been redesigned. Um, we have a new specimen in place. The older two bobcat specimens were in bad condition and uh, needed so much res renovation that we decided to remove them entirely. We acquired a new specimen of a bobcat, did gesture drawings, and worked with the curators here at the museum to approve those gesture drawings to establish the pose of the animal. It's displayed stepping out of the woods across this rock surface hunting and has one ear cocked up at the red squirrel up there in the treetops chattering at it. Uh, you saw earlier uh, our conservator, Eugenie Milroy, restoring the uh, grouping of club mosses in the foreground and working on the uh, leaves, the damp, uh, forest floor effect uh, by using resins that would simulate moisture. Uh, even down to the minutest details, our um, foreground team created um, icicles, the effect of icicles in, uh, on the rock surface and applied a new surface of snow which is uh, a uh, stable material, will not change color over years and uh, glass crystals were applied to the surface to create a crystal effect. We're now standing before the black bear diorama in Mammal Hall. And in this particular diorama, the background painting that you see behind me was all restored and repainted. In order to do that, all of the specimens of the bears the, the porcupine, all of the foreground material was carefully cataloged and removed by our foreground team, cleaned and prepared outside of the diorama. Once all of that material was cleared and out of the way, a platform, scaffold, was built to allow the background painter to access and get back to that curved wall in the back of the diorama. He then worked on the sunset scene that you see before you and completed that. Once that was finished, the platform and scaffolding was disassembled and removed, and all of the leaf litter, all of the plants, the bears themselves, which were cleaned and prepared off-site, were then reinstalled, put back in place, and um, the finishing touches applied. All of the dioramas required new lighting. And uh, this is very important because the old lighting that was in place contained a lot of fluorescent lamps, which were high in ultraviolet damaging rays. In this case, the specimens were burned by those rays and were very pale as a result. Our taxidermist, George Dante, recolored them all by airbrushing them with aerosol dyes, a dye that is not harmful to the specimen, easily removed, and restored all of the color uh, that would be in evidence on a typical American elk. We hope you will join us at the State Museum in downtown Harrisburg, right next to the Capitol, to see our wonderful exhibits and particularly this new rendition of Mammal Hall.